Hello, and thank you for attending this session. My name is Muhammad Adli, and I'm a Solutions Architect in AWS. Today, I'm going to show you how you can integrate your backup software with the AWS Tape Gateway to backup your data to virtual tapes in the AWS Cloud. Each Tape Gateway is pre-configured with a media changer and 10 tape drives. These are available to your existing client backup applications as iSCSI devices. You add virtual tapes as you need to archive your data. The tape gateway can be deployed on VMware or Hyper-V hypervisors for on-premises installation. And it can also be deployed on EC2 if you would like to run it in AWS. Today, I'm going to deploy the tape gateway on EC2 and we'd use Veritas Backup Exec software to perform a sample backup. The tape gateway supports leading backup applications, for example, Veritas, Dell EMC, Veeam, etc. So let's get started. Today, in my AWS console, I created my tape gateway. The tape gateway needs to be assigned two local disks one disk for the cache and one disk for the upload buffer. And hence, I'm getting this alert that I need to allocate local storage. In this session, I'm using storage gateway on EC2. So since I am using EC2, as shown here, so if I go to the instances and then go to my tape gateway, I assigned the storage to the instance as EBS volumes, as shown here. So two volumes of 10 gigabytes are attached to that instance. In the normal uh, situation, when you are using your own uh, VM, so on either Hyper-V or VMware, you would assign local storage to your VM. But since I'm using it on EC2, I assigned EBS volumes. So going back to the storage gateway console, I'd click on my tape gateway, and then I would assign it the local drives or the local EBS volumes that I attach to the instance. So first one I would choose for the cache and then second one I would choose for the upload buffer. As you can see here, there is a hint that the minimum recommended size is 150 gigabytes for the upload buffer and for the cache as well. But since this is used for demonstration purposes, then I'm using 10 gigabytes. I'll click on save. And then, as you can see, the alert is gone. So now, basically, the tape gateway is ready to be connected to the Windows client. But we would need to create a tape where we can back up our data on. So to create the tape on the storage gateway, you would need to go to the Tapes tab and then click on Create Tape. And then I would choose one tape and then capacity, let's say, of 100 gigabytes. And then I would give it a barcode of AA, for example. And then I would create on create tapes. And then it's done. And the tape is available. Now we are ready to connect our tape gateway to the Windows client and perform the backup operation. I am here at my Windows client. I want to discover and connect to my tape gateway iSCSI devices. To be able to do that, I will go to the iSCSI initiator desktop app, then I will go to the discovery tab. So I will go here, and then discovery tab, and then I would click on discovery portal. As you can see, it asks me for the IP address to connect to on port 3260, which is the iSCSI port. Note here that there is a requirement that your client is able to reach the gateway on port 3260. For full network, network requirements, I advise checking the storage gateway public documentation. So now I would go back to the AWS console, and then I would go to the EC2 service, and I would check the instances and the tape gateway instance, and I would write down that IP of the gateway, and then I would go back to my Windows client and then paste that IP here, clicking OK, 
and then going back to the targets tab. As you can see here, the targets appeared. So these targets are 10 targets for the tape drives and one target for the media changer. I would then connect them all very quickly. Then clicking OK. Now we are ready to discover the library and perform backup using the backup software. The Storage Gateway public documentation shows you the information on how to test the supported backup softwares with the Storage Gateway. So if I go here to that menu using your tape gateway and then testing your tape gateway, you would see all the supported backup software listed here, and then you would see how we can test it with the storage gateway. So for example, here I would follow these steps for testing backup exec with the storage gateway. So going back to my Windows client, after we discover the targets, I would open backup exec. And then I would go here and then configurations and settings, backup exec services, and then restart all services. This will allow me to discover the library of the storage gateway on backup exec. Now the restart of all the services is done. So I'm going to close that and then I'm going to go to storage. And here you can see the robotic library, which is the 10 tape drives of the storage gateway and then here is the media changer. So going to the slots, I would like to import the tape that I would back up the data on. So I would click, right click, import, and then import media now. And then a message would appear, respond OK. And then now I should wait till the tape appears. And here it is. Now let's see how can we back up a sample backup file to that tape. So here I have a backup file called backup file of 50 megabytes. Let's see how can I put it into that tape using backup exec. So I close that and then I would go here to backup and restore. One time backup and then one time backup to tape. And then just wait for a few seconds. And then now I'd click on edit. I would deselect all and then just click on my file, which is the backup file. And then I click OK. OK. It should run now. So as you can see here, it's backing up. And if we go to the jobs, you would see a full backup job that's going on right now. So its state is active, and then job state is active queued, and then it's preparing, then it's processing. And if you go here to the storage in the meantime, and then go back to all storage, you would see that the tape is already imported to one of the tape drives since there is a backup operation on that. So going back to the job monitor, it's already successful. Now let's go back to the storage and check the tape drives. So as you can see here, the tape is already not in the tape drive anymore. And if you go to the storage gateway console and check the tapes, you would find that the usage of the tape is 50 megabytes, which is the backup file that I put on the tape. So now going back, to my Windows client. Let's say I'm not in need of using that tape here anymore and I want to archive it for archiving purposes. So that basically means on AWS moving the tape from S3 storage to Glacier storage. 
So what I'm going to do here is that I'm going to right click on that tape and then I'm going to export media, export media now. Then going to wait for the message to say everything is OK. Going back to the storage gateway console, if I refresh on this, it should be in the archived state as shown here. So now the tape is lying in Glacier and it can be retrieved anytime to the storage gateway as a read-only tape, meaning that you cannot write anymore to that tape, but you can read the data that you backed up. You want to retrieve that archive tape and restore backup from it. So to do so, you would go to Actions and then Retrieve Tape and then select your tape gateway and then click on the Retrieve Tape. And then it will load some time and then it would say that the retrieve has started. So for testing and simplicity, I already have a tape here that I retrieved to the tape gateway. So let's see how can you see it back in your backup application. So I would go to my Windows client. Now we go to storage and then I would click import, import media now. Then I would respond that everything is OK. And the tape should appear here in the slots, as you can see.